Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, A.J. Hogue, where A.J.'s more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's A.J. with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. You failed. You worry that you will fail the OET or the TOEFL exam or the IELTS exam or TOEIC. So what is the best strategy to prepare for and pass these English exams? I was looking on YouTube and there are a bunch of YouTube videos with similar titles such as, you know, prepare for the OET in three days. I passed the OET after one week of study, right? It's this kind of title, like one week, two weeks, three days, two days to prepare for and pass the OET or TOEFL or IELTS, right? So, of course, I'm thinking, like, how is this possible? <laughs> <laughs> really? Just two days? Just one week? That's all you need to pass these exams? So I watched some of the videos of the people who said this. And of course, it's a, you know, these are clickbait titles. Because what you find out is that, okay, yes, they, they specifically studied the tests for, let's say, one week. Okay, so it's a doctor or it's a nurse preparing for the OET. They do practice, they find some free practice tests online and they do a bunch of practice tests and maybe a little, you know, some other practice exercises for one week. They take the test and they pass. Yay, they pass the speaking, they pass the listening, the reading, and the writing. But then. You know, the truth comes out. And the truth is that, of course, before that one week, they already were great English speakers, right? They already had a very high level of general English ability, right? They were already fluent speakers. They were already very good at listening to English. They were already good at reading and writing it. So what they did in the last week is they just got used to the test, right? They just they just learned about, you know, what kind of questions are going to be on the test and, you know, how, you know, how should I generally answer them? Well, that's easy, right? And this is the same for TOEFL or IELTS or TOEIC, okay? The test preparation books, the test preparation courses, the test preparation, uh, you know, the practice test. It's okay, but it's only useful. These are only useful if you already have a high level of English. That's what they're not telling you, okay? Unless you, you know, listen to the full video and then you realize, oh yeah, they already had a high level of English. Then they only needed one or two weeks. Well, of course, because the real work, 99% of the work, 99% of what you need for these tests is real English ability, general, conversational, and perhaps even a little advanced English ability, real fluency to speak and have conversations just, just with anybody about any topic, right? The ability to listen and understand English on a whole lot of topics, not just medicine or not just academics for college, right? But everything and reading and writing the same. So that's the point. And this is why, you know, it confirms what I always say is don't focus on these tests too much, okay? Because your real world English ability, that's the most important thing. When you are really good at English in the real world, you can actually talk to people very well. You can listen to videos and native speakers and understand them. You can read novels, right? Real books in English. 
and you can write emails and letters and blog posts. Well, then the test, it's, you're going to pass the test, okay? Sure, you can do some practice tests for a couple of weeks, get used to it, but then it's nothing, right? Then the test becomes actually quite easy. The problem is what a lot of people do is they, they just focus on the test, so they spend months and months and months taking uh, you know, test preparation courses and doing practice tests and trying to memorize you know, word lists from these uh, test preparation books. And they, spend, they waste months and months and months doing this. Then they take the test and they fail. They don't pass. Why not? Because you're too focused on the test. Your general real-life English ability is not good enough. That's the foundation of everything. The little testing skills is just a little on top, okay? So you've got to reverse it. And I know this is, uh, uh, it's hard to do, right? Because you think, well, I just want to, I'm just going to study on this test. But really, you've got to improve your overall real-world English ability. Raise that up to advanced level, to a high level. Be truly, really fluent on a lot of topics. Feel effortless and confident when you speak. Have clear pronunciation, right? Great listening skills. All of these things that I teach you. Then passing the test will be easy. Then you can do a little extra studying, but you only need to do a little bit of extra studying for a specific test, the OET or the TOEFL or the IELTS or whatever, okay? So, you know, the, I have a lot. I was surprised. The reason I'm talking about OET, I was surprised I did some uh, research surveys of my VIP members and Power English course members and extremely surprised that I had a huge, huge, huge number of doctors and nurses. A huge number of doctors and nurses who are longtime members and who you know, leave great reviews and testimonials and i'm like well that's strange i don't teach medical english <laughs> specifically why why do i have so many nurses and doctors and so i started asking them questions and uh i'm still doing that now and i realized well this is why because they have to take the oet exam nurses and doctors do this opens up international job opportunities it opens up a lot of opportunities for them and these these intelligent nurses and doctors have realized that, you know, the real world general English ability is the most important. That's what they need. And then they can study for that test for a couple of weeks and pass it and no problem. And that's what they do. So they, you know, you can study for the test for a couple of weeks, but if your English level is not good, two weeks is not enough. Okay. I think we all know this. There's no magic ability. Okay. You can't download it like Neo in the Matrix. Okay. So if your speaking, listening, reading, writing abilities are low, you're not going to get a great score on those tests in just two weeks. I don't care how many test books you study. You're not going to do it. Your, your real English ability, you need to raise it up. That's going to take, if you're super intense, you might need three months for that. Super intense means like eight hours a day you're working on English. Okay, We're just talking about that in our book club, uh, Ultra Learning. So you can make some giant progress in three months, I think, is the it's the minimum. Less than three months, it's hard to make big improvements. But you could do it. If you if you have an emergency, you've got to take one of these tests, you know, three or four months from now. You can do it, even if your English is not so good. If you have a, you know, maybe your speaking is really weak, maybe your listening's weak. Maybe you're right. Most people reading is the easiest one because you can go slow. You can see the words. It's usually reading is kind of the easiest. Uh, and I think for a lot of people, it's the speaking and the listening that are the toughest. So you can do it three months, but you have to work, work, work hard. OK, you can. I recommend get my Power English course and my VIP program. And because they also test for pronunciation, you probably want to add it in my pronunciation course. You get that. You, can, you probably need that three, those three programs all together. And then you're going to need to listen to those courses and read the text guides and do some extra writing and shadowing for your speaking. You're going to have to do that about eight hours a day or more. 
if it's an emergency, if you only have three or four months, that's what you must do. I'm just telling you the truth, okay? I'm not going to give you some clickbait thing that in five days you can go from <laughs> low intermediate to advanced in your speaking and listening. That's not going to happen, okay? But in three months, you could with massive, huge effort. Now, what if you have six months? What if it's l not such an emergency? Okay, I'm going to take the OET or TOEFL or IELTS, but uh, I've got six months to prepare. Well, now you can relax a little more. You don't need eight hours a day, maybe something more like four hours a day. You, know, you still need a little bit of intensity if your ability now, if right now you're kind of at a low level. Well, you know, it's okay. Just be, be honest with yourself. Be honest. If your speaking is terrible, then it's terrible. If your listening is really weak, okay, whatever. You start where you are. Okay, you start where you are. So what do you need? Again, so I, again, I would recommend the same three programs for you if you have about if you have six months or less. So, right? So get my Power English course, add the VIP program, and add the pronunciation course. That bundle, those three. That's what you are going to need to make big, fast progress in six months in all areas to, to totally pass these tests, right? OET, and then this is also true for IELTS and TOEFL. A lot of you do will prefer those tests. So get those three, and you're going to put in about four hours a day, you know, following all the advice I give you in those programs. Now, what if you have even more time? Well, now you can really relax, okay? And you don't need to get so many courses, okay? If you've got like a year to prepare, even if your ability is pretty low now, well, now you can just follow my standard normal advice, which is do about, you know, one to two hours a day. And you can just start with just one course and finish it and then get the next course and finish it and then get the next course and finish it. So you can go one by one, spread out the cost, spread out the time, and be much more relaxed about it, okay? If you've got a year or even more time for to take these exams and pass them and get a high score, if you are at a low level now, not so good, well then, you know, start with Power English. That's what I'd recommend. Go to my homepage, effortlessenglishclub.com, buy that course there, and just do the course, follow it. It's going to take you about, mm, if you're going at kind of a relaxed p speed, you need about five months maybe to finish that course. And then you can get the pronunciation course and then you could add the VIP program, but you can take your time and uh, no worry, no stress, right? So it really depends on you. The other thing, right, the other important part of this, how long to pass the test is what is your level now? So if you're starting at a low level, if your speaking is crap, it's terrible, <laughs> your, your listening's terrible, your pronunciation, nobody can understand you, and, uh, and you, 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 you write badly, okay, well, now you're starting quite low and you've got a long way to go. But on the other hand, if you're starting out already pretty good, like you're pr already pretty fluent you may you're not perfect but you're you can speak fluently you understand quite well you're pretty good at writing because you're you know you've been in med school you've been in nursing school you've been in some other maybe english language grad school so you feel like oh, i'm confident my writing's pretty good my reading's solid right well then now you again like this adjusts it everything becomes easier this is like the youtube people i was talking about well yeah they're already good so they only need a couple weeks okay if you're like really high level like if i wanted to pass the oet i would just need to study some medical vocab right like i, I don't know if i could pass it right now just cuz i'm not you know in the medical field but i have actually worked in a hospital i was a social worker in an emergency room so i do know a little bit so probably i could do it in a week or two just uh Take, the, take some sample tests and, uh, you know, learn a little bit of extra medical vocab. And I could probably pass it quite easily. Why? Well, because I'm already a native speaker. My reading and writing and speaking and listening levels in English in general are obviously native level. 
So passing the test, TOEFL or TOEIC or whatever, obviously would be very, very easy for me, right? So your level is very important. These guys on YouTube, they're starting at a high level. Okay, yes, they passed the test in two weeks, okay? Don't feel bad if you can't do that because, you know, <laughs> that's, that's probably not normal. Most people are not starting already at a near native level. And, if, and there's no reason to get depressed if your level's quite low, you just, it just depends on your current level and depends on your time pressure. When do you need to pass it, right? And then that, that decides, uh, you know, how many courses you need and how many hours every day you need to be working on English. And you're probably busy doing other things too. You've got a job, you've... You're, you're, you're studying, you're in med school or nursing school, or you're in a grad program, or you're working at a company or something. So, you know, this, this, is, this is the honest truth, okay? So I recommend for any test, don't focus on the test, okay? You want real world English. I mean, what good is it if you pass this test and then you get a job, but then your English is no good in the real world, in the, re in the job? And then you have all kinds of problems in the job. Or maybe you can't even get jobs. Just because you pass the test doesn't mean you automatically get a job. You're going to have job interviews. If it's international, they're going to interview you in English. So if you got a high score on the test, but you're actually not very good in real-world communication, they're going to see that in the job interview. So, wow, you got a test score, but who cares? You can't get the job anyway. So... Focus on what's real, your real world English ability, make that strong. And then the test becomes preparing for the test is just like a, you know, a, an extra week or two. It's nothing. Right? Don't make the mistake. A lot of people do of focusing on the test because then you waste six months doing practice tests and you still fail it. Or maybe you just pass it, but then you do terrible in job interviews and you can't do, actually do the job in, in English. It's not the way to do it. All right. Let's get into some quick comments and questions, and then I'm going to go. Lots of people saying, hello from many countries as usual. Mohammed Elakari says, listening to your podcast, will it help me with IELTS? Or should I do something else to pass it? Okay, Mohammed. So again, this is a. It really depends on time. A lot of people have had some very good success, even with test scores, just listening to my free podcast. If you have, a, if you can do that for a year, year and a half, two years, then the podcast maybe that's just enough. It's just that. If you have a more of a time pressure, like, I oh, know I want to, I need to pass the IELTS, I need to pass the OET, I need to pass this in six months or less, you probably need to get one of my courses, right? If you, if you just want to get things done faster and at a higher level and more efficiently, get a course. If you're broke and you got no money, then you do the, do the podcast. It's a, that's why I make the podcast, okay? So yes, you can, but it's just going to be slower. So this is a good example of something where you've just got to learn naturally, which is why, you know, Efforts English, I, I teach you naturally. I don't teach you grammar rules. I do not have you memorize grammar rules. You learn grammar, but you learn grammar from the point of view stories. You learn grammar in a natural way, and, and you get a feeling for correctness, a feeling for the grammar. Because if you try to analyze it and think about all the rules, you know you just get confused. Even I get confused. If I try to think about grammar rules in English all the time, it confuses me. So, for example, this question, Esneke says, uh, why do native speakers sometimes say, for example, I'm going with you instead of I'm going to go with you? I mean, I don't know what the situation is, but many times there are several ways to say the same thing. And sometimes you could say, you know, in general, if you said like, uh, I'm going to the store, well, it means it generally means generally, you know, the grammar books will tell you it means that you're going to go now, but it might just mean, you know, fairly soon could still be in the future. 
even though you're using the present tense, you know, or you're using the, the, the present progressive, you know, ing, right? So the grammar books would say that that means it's happening right this second, but that's not exactly true in real, in the real world speaking. I might say what I might say to my wife. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going, I'm going to the store today. But I'm not going right now, right this second. I might be going, it might be, you know, five hours from now. Or I might, I can also say, I'm gonna, I'm going to go to the store today, right? Or tonight. So there's a lot more, you know, language, real language, the real world language is not so, you know, super logical <laughs> the way and super, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, rigid right? Meaning it can't brand. The real language is quite flexible. So there are many ways to say things and it, the, things don't always follow the grammar textbooks. This is why you need to learn from real English, from stories, and you need to learn more naturally. And you, things will just start to sound correct to you. And you, it doesn't, you, you don't need to explain it. Being able to explain the grammar does not help you when, in terms of real speaking. Like I know a lot of students <laughs> a lot of uh, uh, like foreign professors who can, you know, they can explain all kinds of complicated grammar. But then when they speak, they, they do it wrong. They make grammar mistakes constantly. So, they can, so explaining, that's called linguistics. But you don't need to, unless you're getting a PhD in linguistics, that's not important to you. What's important to you is you, you can get a feeling for correctness and you just do it naturally without thinking. You don't want to be thinking about grammar rules while you speak. It's not, it'll kill your fluency. Yeah, like Chris says, I'm not interested in passing those exams if I don't have the ability and fluency to speak. What's the point? Exactly. People lose the point. They get so focused on the exam, they lose the point. What is the exam measuring? It's supposed to be measuring real world ability. So just focus on the real world ability. And then the exam becomes actually pretty easy. Francisco says the VIP community is going to improve a lot. Indeed. Hi from Brazil and Argentina. Ryan Vong says uh, you always bring us the truth and practical knowledge. Yes, indeed. Cool. Jamal Liden Yahobov. I know I'm pronouncing your name badly. I'm sorry. Hi, AJ. I hope you're doing great. I have taken the IELTS and I have gotten 8.5 out of 9. I listened to hundreds of your podcasts and stories. I boosted my listening comprehension a lot. Thank you, AJ. So there you go. The question about the podcast. Mesquita says, when I started learning English, you were the first native speaker that I understood. Think about my happiness when I played your video and I understood almost everything you said. Awesome. Okay, a couple more. I'm going to try to keep this a little shorter today. Okay, let's see. Got any of those? Hopam Hua says, I got an email from you that you're doing a video Zoom call with VIP members and some Power English members. Is that true? Yes, that's from me. It's a true one. So I hope to talk to you on Zoom. Uh, when is that? Next week, I think, right? Yes. I do Zoom calls with my VIP members and uh, decided to invite some of the Power English members as well. <laughs> Mohammed says, before healthcare workers learn English, they need to learn not to accept everything the World Health Organization says. That's a whole nother topic. <laughs> uh, Mike M.M. says, I missed your book club episodes. They are amazing. We're doing ultra learning as our book club now. 
So uh, we just did chapter two. We started with chapter two because I chapter one didn't really have much. We'll do chapter three soon, next week. Sevar says, I'm Sevar from uh, Kurdistan. I have benefited a lot from your podcast. Most of the problems you talk about are exactly what happens in our country. It's very common. You know, there's a whole industry uh, focused on test preparation. I mean, it's a lot of money. And, uh, and you know, I, I understand it because you, you, it's easy to get focused because you think, well, you know, for my job, I got to pass this test, you know, for my career. And uh, so it's easy to get really focused on the test and forget that what is the test actually testing, <laughs> okay? And, uh, you know, a lot of people will, you know, like I said, there's a lot of clickbait titles where people kind of uh, directly or indirectly uh, say that, you know, if you just learn, basically like you're learning tricks to pass the test. There are no tricks. If your English is bad, no amount of test tricks are going to help you, okay? There's, it, they're not. These test tricks and knowing the test really well and, you know, preparing for the test can be, you know, helpful a little bit. It might boost your score a little if you're already quite good. If you're already close to passing or going to pass, then maybe that might help a little. It might be enough, right? But, but in general, if you just have great English, like I said, you know, I could pass the test. Not even a doctor or a nurse. I'm sure I could pass that test. Probably my, I just need to study a little bit of vocab for medical, um, you know, medical stuff, medical vocabulary and ways of uh, presenting, which, you know, doctors and nurses already know that. But what they don't have is the general English ability. And this same for TOEFL, you know, same for IELTS, same for TOEIC. I don't know, whatever other ones are out there. Amina, hey, good to see you, Amina. As always, what time is it in your country? It's 10.30 here in the morning. <laughs> Anna says, are you going to make your new shows every single day? I must put my alarm clock on. Not every day, but I'm trying to do about four or five days a week get back to doing a frequent schedule like I used to do Miro says um, cool zoom meeting sounds great I'm not one of your VIP members yet but I guess there's no way for North African countries I'm from Algeria sure we have people from North Africa uh, Egypt I'm sure we have Algeria uh, you know, it's a great thing. Zoom is I try to I try to change the time zones. This is the difficult part about Zoom. The Zoom coaching calls is we have people everywhere. So it doesn't matter if I anytime I choose, it's going to be good for some people and bad for other people. Right. For some people, it's going to be late at night. Other people early in the morning and some people in the middle of the night. So I try to just change it around. I'm in Japan, so I'll do Japan's morning time. And then maybe the next month I'll try to do it in the afternoon or the evening. And so you, but we record them also, so you can always watch the recording. Evan said, you're not a man. You're so, you're so great. We all love you. Well, that's nice. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I think that is all. Ah, Akbar says, uh, Albiru Akbar says, almost all people from Indonesia assume perfect English means perfect grammar, needs perfect grammar. Yeah, well, this is like, you know, you'll, you'll see on my website, I talk about this, is, is grammar killing your English fluency, your English speaking? That's the headline on effortlessenglishclub.com. So... 
why is that the headline? Because this is exactly right. This is the number one problem around the world uh, in most countries with English teaching. Is they're training you to be a linguist. To analyze, analyze, analyze English grammar, right? You know, I tell this story because it's just, it's kind of funny. My early days of teaching, when I was just using the normal textbooks like everyone else, I remember that there there was one day there was, I did a lesson about um, articles. Articles, that's like the, T-H-E, right? The, the, a, and an, okay? And in in the textbook, there were, over two pages of rules, I mean, like line after line after line after line of rules, how and when to use articles. Two pages of rules. Like, I, I don't even know how many, 20, 30, I don't know, I can't remember. But a huge number of rules for the, how to use the word the. This is impossible to, to do in a real, sp imagine how many times an English speaker uses that word. Like, you know, almost every single sentence, constantly, all day. There's no way you can think about, you know, 20 rules about the word the every time it's, you're speaking. You, you would never be able to talk. You'd be, uh, you would just be frozen, okay? It's impossible to remember all that. And I remember reading the rules as a native speaker and going, is that true? Hmm. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. And having to think about it. Right? And, and most of those rules, I thought, like, oh, I never even thought about this before. Because you can't think about it. No way you can think about all that in a, in a normal conversation, listening or speaking or even writing. There's not enough time to think about all those rules for something so simple and so, so common that we use all the time. So it creates this huge confusion where, and of course they do this with everything. It's not just articles. They do it with all the verb tenses. And those are probably the worst. The verb tenses, prepositions, another one, you know, in, on, under, by, through, uh, phrasal verbs, right? People try to analyze phrasal verbs and like logically, and many times it's not logical. Many times you ask a native speaker, we don't even know why we use the phrasal verb. Why do we say it that way? Why is a different meaning if you change the preposition, right? They don't know. So it, it just destroys your ability to naturally communicate. What native speakers have and what all fluent people have even if they're not native, is they have a feeling for correctness. It's intuitive. It's natural. They're not thinking about the rules. Most of the time, they can't even tell you the rules. Right? You ask most native speakers, why did you say the? Right? I went to the store today. Why did you say the? Why didn't you just say I went to store today? Uh, if you ask me or any native speaker, or, or even anybody who's fluent, they're going to stop and they're like, ah, you know, uh, I don't know. Let me think about it. And they, they, they have to really stop and think for a while about why sometimes they say the and sometimes they don't. But they they know when to do it. It's just it could be because it's, it's unconscious, it's subconscious because they've listened so much, they've read so much in so many natural, real situations that they have a natural understanding of it it's automatic and effortless so it just happens automatically that's what you have to have you need this for real communication you, you want it to be automatic and effortless that's why i call it effortless english right so you have to develop that it's the same in sports if you if we look at it like sports instead of academic if we compare it to sports we will instantly understand right because it's say if you're playing basketball and you're shooting basket well you could study physics of the okay so i need to apply you know 20 pounds of pressure per square inch at this angle with this you know acceleration you know some physicists could study all of that or some you know uh anatomist or you know what do, we, what do we call anatomist and so anyway someone with a phd in anatomy right but none of that would help you actually shoot 
baskets, right? And make the shot again and again. No, you just have a feel for it. You, you might get a few little tips like, you know, keep your elbow down or something like that and look at the basket, right? Coaches can give little small tips, but they're, but they're not really analyzing in super details, right? It's, you're, instead, you just got to shoot a lot of baskets. You might get little small tips sometimes. You might watch uh, other people who are really good at shooting baskets, you know, professionals, really good shooters, and kind of start getting a feeling for how they're doing it. And then you'll just improve. And then, you know, you're shooting the baskets, but you're not really thinking at all. You're just doing it. It's automatic. It's effortless. Very similar to fluency for speaking, listening, reading, and writing. So Miro... Loji says, uh, yes, it's the best way to learn is subconsciously like a child. That's what we learned from you, from me, AJ, and what changed my pronunciation entirely. Yeah, same with pronunciation. You're right. You're right. Because uh, it can help a little bit. To, if you're having trouble with one sound, you can think about, oh, where do I put my tongue? And, you, you know, to, to practice a little. But when you're actually speaking in conversation, you can't be thinking about where your tongue is going, right? You just got to get a feeling for it. So you might practice it a little until you get a feeling. You got to, you just, you, it feels right. You know how it feels to pronounce TH correctly. You know how it feels to pronounce R and L correctly, meaning clearly, where some people can understand you. And then once you have the feeling, then it's effortless. All right, guys. <clears throat> Anna says, have you heard about Luke's podcast? Yeah, I talked to Luke. I met Luke once. He came to, he visited, when I was living in San Francisco, Luke came to San Francisco and we actually did a podcast together uh, one time. This is, this would be a long time ago <laughs> now. Uh, time flies. He's a very nice guy. I like him. He's British. So if you're interested in British English, he's a great one for that. Cool. Perry Sultan says, I am going to prepare for the IELTS. I hope your classes will help. Yes, indeed. You know, watch this again. Let me just summarize quickly. So again, it depends on your current level of real English, real speaking, listening, reading, and writing ability. Where are you? Is it low or is it medium? Is it high? Be honest, right? It's okay. If it's low, just be honest. My, my English is terrible. <laughs> All right? And then... Number two is the time pressure. When do you need to take the test and pass it? So if your level is low and you have a short time, like three months, four months, then you must, must, must do English full time. Okay. You're going to need eight hours a day, nine hours a day, 10 hours a day of English. If you need to, if your, if your level's low, you need to pass in three months, four months, you're going to have to work very, very hard, very intense, right? Ultra learning is what you need. If you're using my, you need to get courses, Power English, VIP program, and the pronunciation program, the pronunciation course. I would say get all three of those and do eight hours a day or more. If you are low level, but you have more time, now you have six months. Okay, now you can do a little less, maybe four hours a day of English, and maybe you only need two courses. If you have longer than six months, so you're kind of low level, but you got nine months, you've got 12 months, great, you can relax now. Two, one to two hours a day of English is enough, and just start with one course, start with my Power English course if you're doing my system. So that's the way it is. And of course... All of this also changes if your level is quite high and you only have a, you only need to improve a little bit. Well, again, now you can relax more and you can do less and get good results. So it, it's very individual. You have to figure out and decide for yourself. But you can pass the OET if you're a nurse or a doctor, dentist or anything who needs that test. Absolutely, you can pass it. And even if you're low level, I think you could pass in three, maybe four months. I think you could be good enough. You just got to work, work, work. You got to focus on English for a while, like as your full-time job. And uh, you can do the same with TOEFL and the same with IELTS. If it's an emergency, you can do it. Just 
Don't believe the clickbait. You're going to have to work. All right. Now, you can get my free book. If you want to just know more about my effortless English system, my entire book, I'm giving you my book for free, the whole book, the entire book as an ebook. Okay, you just enter your email and download it. So just go on the screen if you're watching on video, effortlessenglishclub.com slash seven rules. And if you're just if you're listening uh, to the podcast, you just go to the website, effortlessenglishclub.com. Just go to the bottom of the page and enter your email. Enter your email anywhere on the website. You'll see a lot of email forms where you can enter your email. After you enter your email, I send in the first email, I send you a link to download the whole book, the entire book. And soon, uh, we're working on our websites right now, but once we get done with our projects we're doing now, I will add the audiobook for free also. So this is great. You can read my book, learn the whole system, and you can also uh, listen to the whole book. It's me reading the book my voice. If you like my voice, then you can get the audiobook for free too. So effortlessenglishclub.com for both. All right. Lots of love to you all. <clears throat> Don't get stressed about the exams. You can do it. Focus on real world English. The exams will become quite easy. Okay. See you next time. Bye for now.